okay, you should be sitting down in front of your computer or iPad or whatever your uh, device of choice is, and you should be happy. This is the last set of notes in the last video uh, for Unit 5. Going to cover linear inequalities. Uh, you'll also even see some systems of inequalities since we've been doing systems so much. Uh, but obviously the change will be instead of dealing with linear equations, we're talking about inequalities. The other reason to be happy today, this definitely will rely on some of your background knowledge uh, as we go through the video. You will remember some of this stuff. Uh, before we get to the graphing of the linear inequalities and showing those solutions, I kind of want to talk about the number of solutions that each inequality has. And so just notice a question like this would come up on a quiz or a test. And just want to be able to do this. It says, tell whether the ordered pair 0, 1 uh, is a solution of 2x minus 3y is less than 6. And so if you look at that, you see that you actually have an ordered pair, 0, 1. And we remind ourselves that ordered pairs are always x, y. And so then if I want to check and see if this ordered pair is a solution to that equation, I can just plug those numbers in respectively. So I have 2 times 0 minus 3 times 1. Plug it in the x and y values is less than 6. And I just want to see if I get a true statement or not. Uh, 2 times 0 is 0. 3 times 1 is 3. And I have 0 minus 3 is less than 6, and I think we all know that 0 minus 3 is a negative 3, and negative 3 is in fact less than 6. So yes, that ordered pair is a solution of the inequality. Um, now, what I want you to remember now is that's not the only solution of the inequality. Obviously, inequalities are going to have infinitely many solutions, uh, just like our linear equations will as well. And so that's going to be how we actually solve these, is we're going to graph them to show all the possible uh, solutions of each inequality. Real quick background knowledge check. You're going to want to know the slope and the y-intercept. Uh, when you're given slope-intercept form, remember M M refers to the slope and B refers to the y-intercept and we can use those to graph. And then some background knowledge from before uh, and also even when you're just doing one variable inequalities, let alone the two variable inequalities. But uh, if I have a less than symbol, that line's going to be dotted. I'm going to shade below, uh, whereas less than or equal to would be a solid line. Remember, that's because uh, it's solid uh, when it includes that line, when those are possible values that would also work. It would be dotted then when that line actually doesn't work, but all the values above or below do. And I think it'll come back to you a little bit when we get to graphing on these. But do remember that the line can change depending on the symbol of inequality, and then you're either going to shade above or below. Uh, so a couple examples. Just graph y is greater than or equal to 2x minus 4. Um, we notice that that is in slope-intercept form, so we can identify that we have a slope of 2, and then we have a y-intercept of negative 4. We're going to use that to graph. We'll always start at the y-intercept. We start at the point negative 4. We've graphed that y-intercept. And then we use that slope of 2, which would be the same thing as 2 over 1, to then graph the rest of my equation. So I'm going to go up 2 over 1 as I go to the right. And remember, the big idea that we talked about with these, we're really going to try to fill up this graph, get a really good idea of the possible ordered pairs that are going to work in these inequalities. Now that we've filled up the graph with the dots, we've got to ask ourselves, all right, what's our sim symbol of inequality here, and what does that mean for our line and our shading? We see that y has to be greater than or equal to that line. If you don't remember, you have kind of a shortcut here. Greater than or equal to tells us we're going to have a solid line and we're going to shade above. The reasoning for this is it's equal to, so we're going to include this line. Um, in our possible answers. Ordered pairs on that line absolutely will work in that inequality. All those ordered pairs that we graphed will work. But there's a lot of other ordered pairs that will work as well, and that's all ordered pairs where y is greater than that line, and y would be greater than that line above that line. And so remember, we're going to do nice, neat shading. want to really fill this up. Um, notice how I'm trying to kind of cover up my graph so I really get a good idea of where the possible solutions are in this inequality. Anything in that shaded area will work in the inequality, and anything below that line that's not shaded would not work. Uh, one other example, just to show you the idea, if maybe we get something that's not in slope-intercept form, and I graph x plus 2y is less than 6. Uh, to get it in the slope-intercept form, we just want to solve for y. So I'd begin by subtracting x on both sides. That would give me 2y is less than a negative x plus 6, trying to put it in the slope-intercept form. So I put the x first. Divide by 2 to get y by itself, but then remember I need to divide everything by 2. When I do that, I should end up with y is less than a negative 1 half x plus 3. Again, now I have an m of negative 1 half. I have a negative slope. Make sure your graph makes sense. Then I have a y-intercept of 3. Uh, start with the y-intercept. Go up 3. Uh, since it's a negative slope, I know I'm going to go down. And that's rise over run. Down 1 over 2. Down 1 over 2 each time I go to the right. Again, really trying to fill up this graph if possible. Uh, I want to go back the other way. If that would go back the other way, then I'd want to be up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. Um, and again, get a really good picture of what this graph looks like. I'll go ahead and put lines on it now. And then I want you to notice we have a symbol of less than. Again, if you go back to your cheat sheet, think of values less than. Um, when it's less than, we're going to have a dotted line because it doesn't include that line. And we're going to shade below because we want all values where y is below that line. So again, I'm going to just leave it dotted. And all values where y is less than this line is where our ordered pairs will work. And so I shade everything below the line. 
And notice I didn't make it a solid line because the line is not included. All the solutions up to that line, but not including that line, uh, would work. Uh, that's a really quick review on graphing linear inequalities. Again, I think the best thing besides these two quick examples uh, would obviously be the background knowledge reminders and the, or the cheat sheet, if you want to call it that. Um, and then that should really take care of linear inequalities and should really take care of unit five.